The story of the future diary starts with a girl trying to wake up the main protagonist Yuki as he is lying unconscious on the floor. The scene then shifts to a girl in a dark cell where she gets stabbed to death. With her last breath, she requests for Yuki to help her. Back to the main story. Yuki is a young boy who lives a lonely school life. He used to have friends back in elementary school but when he kept turning everyone down, people eventually stopped approaching him. He thinks that it is better for him anyways as he is an observer. He writes everything that happens to him or around him in his cell phone diary no matter how big or small. He goes home from his school and goes to his room to talk to his imaginary friend, Deus Ex Machina who is the god of time and space. Deus says that the world needs something to excite it. Yuki jokingly says that he doesn't want him to start a war for this but Deus says that he has an interesting game plan for everyone. Deus's assistant Murumuru asks Yuki about his diary and wonders if there is any purpose to this diary. Yuki replies that the diary and this imaginary world is all he has so there is no dream or purpose to why he writes in his diary. Hearing this, Deus asks Yuki if he would like to do something for his loneliness. When Yuki fails to answer, Deus gives him a future in the form of his diary and says that it will be an interesting game. At night, a girl is getting chased by a serial killer through an alley and eventually gets killed. Yuki wakes up the next day and sees a bunch of entries in his diary for the rest of the day including the answers to his upcoming quiz. Thinking that he must have written these while asleep, he continues on his day but soon starts to realize that his day is actually going just as it is written in the diary. Confused by all this, he approaches Deus who tells Yuki that his diary now tells him his future. Yuki tells Deus that he doesn't really exist and is only imaginary, but Deus answers that if he is indeed the god of time and space, it wouldn't be hard for him to live in his mind. He further tells Yuki that if his diary or in other words, the cell phone breaks then he will be killed as well. The next day, a bunch of students plan to ambush and beat Yuki but he manages to avoid it by using his diary. He thinks that he is the winner in the game of life as all he needs to do is make sure that his phone doesn't break. The next day during a quiz, he sees one of his classmates, Gasai Yuno, looking at him strangely. When the quiz finishes, he sees an entry in his diary stating that a serial killer will kill him and there is no entry in the diary after that. At the same time, Yuno enters the class and tells him that she already knows he is the owner of a future diary. Thinking that she is the serial killer, he runs away from her and the future starts to change. He gets on a lift but to his surprise, Yuno manages to enter the lift just before it closes. Yuno shows off her future diary and kisses him. She tells Yuki that she can see his future every 10 minutes since she has the future diary of love. The two of them see a third owner of the future diary who is the real killer. In Yuno's diary, Yuki will get killed on the 14th floor of the building so they go to the roof instead to avoid this outcome. When the killer comes there, Yuki destroys his diary with his dart causing him to get sucked into a vortex and die. Afterward, all the future diary owners are gathered in an arena by Deus where Yuki is declared the first winner. Deus explains the roles of the game and says that they can change their future by avoiding the events that are written in the diary which also causes the future entries to change. When a diary owner decides to kill another order, a dead end will form just like it formed in Yuki's diary earlier. All the owners must find each other using their diaries and be the last man standing in order to win this survival game. As a prize, they will become the next god of time and space. The next day, Yuki goes to school and finds out that his teacher Hiyama is absent today. He tries to talk to Yuno but she has to go to the PE class. When he was the only one remaining in his class, a girl named Maini Noryu arrived in the class. She asks Yuki if he knows the whereabouts of Hiyama. She has heard that Hiyama was the serial killer that was killed yesterday. She proceeds to tell Yuki that Hiyama was the third future diary owner. She checks Yuki's phone and confirms her suspicion of being the first. Yuki checks his phone and realizes that it has received a dead end meaning that Oryu wants to kill him. Yuno, who was changing clothes in the PE's dressing room, checks her phone and realizes that Yuki is in danger. She grabs a fire extinguisher and rushes towards Oryu but she manages to evade her. Oryu then tells the two of them that she is the ninth future diary owner and it won't be easy for them to get rid of her like it was with Hiyama who had the murder diary. She jumps out of the window and detonates a bunch of bombs that she has planted all around the school in an attempt to kill Yuki. She announces to everyone in the school that they are her hostages and if they want to live, they should stay in their classrooms. Yuno and Yuki escape a bunch of explosions using their diaries. Yuki realizes that since he is an observer, his diary only tells the future about his surroundings and not him. Realizing this has made Yuki sad but Yuno tries to comfort him by saying that her diary only tells her about him so by combining the power of their diaries, they can accurately see what will happen and become an invincible duo.
Yuno then thinks of helping Yuki's teachers and classmates as she thinks that they would help Yuki. But Oryu has told everyone that she has disabled all the bomb sensors for some time and if they apprehend Yuki and Yuno, she will not cause any more casualties. The students captured Uki and brought him to Oryu, thinking that it was her fault for telling Yuki to go to his friend. She escapes from the students, causing a bunch of bombs to go off. Seeing this a policeman called Kirusu Kego arrives to help Yuki and reveals that he is the fourth future diary owner and has the investigation diary which foretells all sorts of crimes. He tells Yuki that Oryu's attention was always to kill him as a police officer with an investigation diary is a nuisance to her plans of becoming a god. He on the other hand has no interest in becoming a god and only wants to stop crime. Oryu tells Kirusu to kill Yuki and himself otherwise she will call all of the students. Kirusu points his gun towards Yuki who tells Kirusu to give his death some meaning. Luckily, Yuno arrives in time and attacks Oryu but she dodges and throws her away. Kirusu tells Yuki to pick up his diary through the school ground where Oryu has planted mines all over. Yuno guides him through the minefield which allows him to pick up his diary. Yuki manages to close in on her and pierces her left eye using his dart. Oryu uses a smoke screen and escapes on a bike before revealing that she has the escape diary. Afterward, Kirus tells Yuki and Yuni that the other diary owners will come for Yuki and they need to stop them in order to put an end to this stupid game. Therefore, he suggests that the three of them combine the power of their diaries to defeat them. Kirus who knows the identity of five future diary owners out of the twelve including himself so now he plans to find the identity of the remaining seven with the help of Yuki and Yuno. In order to lure out Aryu, Kirusu sends the two of them to a local amusement park. Yuki and Yuno take a bunch of rides and are kind of having a date. Yuno brings some ice cream for Yuki and even baits him to drink juice with the same straw. They go to a horror-themed area where Yuno ends up getting too scared, making Yuki think that she is somewhat a normal girl. They then change into their swimsuits for the pool area, but Yuki is too scared to show himself but eventually goes in the water with Yuno. Unfortunately, Yuno's top became undone and floated away in the water. Yuki tries to go retrieve it but Yuno stops him saying that she will be alone and scared. Yuki tells a nearby attendant about the situation and asks if she can bring her top back which she does so. Later, Yuno wants to go to a planetarium but Yuki brushes off the idea and goes to a ferris wheel with Yuno. There, Yuki asks Yuno's reason for following him all the time. Yuno answers the question with a question and asks Yuki about his reason to avoid the planetarium. Yuki thinks that Yuno has read his diary but Yuno tells him that he has expressed his interest in stargazing to her in the past. In a flashback, Yuki and Yuno are writing their dreams for the future but both are struggling to find something to write about. Yuno approaches Yuki who tells her that he always wanted to go stargazing with his parents but couldn't since they split up. As he only wants to go with his family, Yuno offers to become his bride so they can go stargazing. Thinking that it's a joke, Yuki agrees to do it when they grow up. In the present, Yuno kisses Yuki on the forehead. Later in the night, Yuno takes Yuki to her house and invites her inside. Meanwhile, Oryu is on the run from the police and has ditched her dress to wear a crop top. She is approached by a mysterious man named Hurasaka who offers to help her as she has no other choice. Hurasaka takes her to his cabin and offers some medicine. She checks her escape diary to see if there is something wrong with the medicine. When no new entry is written, she takes the medicine only to realize that Hurasaka has drugged her. Hurasaka snaps his fingers making Oryu realize that she was hypnotized. Hurasaka pulls out her damaged eye and asks her about the other future diary owners. Meanwhile, in Yuno's house, Yuki goes to find a bathroom. Following his diary's instructions, he finds a sealed off room that is covered in tapes. He opens the door and finds a bunch of corpses there with help me written on the wall of the room. When Yuki opened the door, the future began to change drastically. Deus is satisfied that he chose Yuki as his favorite because this action of his caused the whole timeline of the survival game to change. Yuno comes behind her and asks why he opened that door. Yuki flees back to his house and locks everything. He hears the letterbox open only to see Yuno looking at him with psychotic eyes wishing him good night. Yuki thinks of calling Kirusu to tell him about what he saw but stops when Yuno realizes that he is going to call someone. The next day, Kirusu arrives to pick him up from his house. He tries to tell him again but Yuno changes the topic. Kirusu tells Yuki that Oryu has been captured by a religious group called Onkata. They go to the Onkata temple where some kind of festival is happening. After requesting a few times, they are taken to meet with the head priestess Tsubaki who reveals that she is the sixth diary owner. Her eyesight is weak and because of that, she has been living in this cage since she was a child. Ergu is locked in an underground basement of the temple but the main reason she brought them here was that she has a dead end set for her in her clairvoyance diary. 
With that diary she is able to see the future observations of her followers. She proposes a deal and asks Yuki to protect her, in exchange she will hand over Aryu to Kyrus. Even though Yuno is against it, Yuki agrees to protect her. Later, her followers bring a futon for her in the cage. She tells Yuki to not trust Yuno as she would bring destruction upon him. As they were talking, her futon suddenly caught fire, and her whole room was covered in flames. One of the followers tries to put out the fire with water but realizes that he actually used gasoline as if he was hypnotized. Her followers then start to kill each other with axes. Yuki goes to rescue Tsubaki from the cage despite Yuno telling her not to. Soon the flames are put away by the sprinkler system which Kirusu has repaired. In the underground area where Oryu is held, Hurasaka tells Oryu about his plans of killing Tsubaki and wears his spandex suit. Meanwhile, Yuno goes into the cage and threatens to kill Tsubaki if she doesn't let go of Yuki. Soon a dead end is also set up for Yuki. Yuno tells Yuki to kill the corpses as they were hypnotized to play dead. She tells Tsubaki to be the bait until Yuki is safe. As an ultimatum, she tells Yuki to go with her and live or go with Tsubaki and die. The furthest thing Tsubaki can see with her weak eyesight is her hands. Her parents told her that in exchange for poor eyesight, she was given the eyes to see far into the future. To put this power that doesn't exist to good use, her parents started the Omkata religion in order to fool people and made her the priestess of it. For two years, she was treated as a sex slave and was used in turns by her followers with only her mother's red ball to comfort her. However, she eventually lost that ball too which started her descent into madness. In the present, Yuno, Yuki, and Tsubaki flee from the temple. Kurosaki hears the future changing in his voice recorder which he calls the Justice Diary. He takes one of Oryu's bombs and confronts the trio with five other people he has hypnotized in order to carry out his mission of justice. Before leaving, he hands out the cell keys to Oryu. Yuki receives a call from Kirusu who tells her that the 12th Future Diary owner is coming to kill the 6th, which is Tsubaki. Hurasaka arrives there with the people he hypnotized and tells Yuki and Yuno to escape as he only intends to kill Tsubaki who, according to him, is managing a cult that does wrong deeds. He further tells them that one of them has the bomb with him but they won't be able to tell the difference since they are wearing the same clothes. Hurasaka and his decoys start their attack but Yuno tricks him into using his superior hearing and kills him. Afterward, Tsubaki captures Yuki and Yuno and tricks the latter by kissing Yuno. Tsubaki checks her diary and realizes that her dead end still hasn't gone away. Yuno frees herself from the followers and cuts Tsubaki's hand off before pushing Yuki from the bridge so they can escape. Hiding, Yuki sees how much Yuno loves by checking the entries on her phone. Tsubaki orders for her followers to take turns on Yuno and announces it as well in order to make Yuki come back. Yuki sees the red ball which she had lost and uses it to distract her followers' visions so Tsubaki can't use her diary. He then uses his dart and pierces her dairy causing her to fade away into a vortex. Afterward in Kirusu's car, the two share a kiss. Oryu is released by Kirusu under some conditions and wonders why he exchanged emails with her. Yuki goes to pick up his mother Ria from the train station. She took a few days off from her work because her colleague got killed in the incident at Onkata Temple and volunteered to watch over her child Rizuk. When they get back, they see that one of the windows is broken. It was broken by Yuno who entered the house earlier. Yuki realizes that it is Yuno that broke the window and tells his mother to prepare dinner while he goes upstairs to check on Yuno. He goes into his bedroom only to see Yuno cleaning it. Yuno even prepared the food already and has done several other chores to impress his mother. He hides her in a closet when Ria enters the bedroom. Yuki forces her mother out of the room in an attempt to not reveal that Yuno is present in the house. However, her mother barges into the room again and sees Yuno. Later, they are sitting at a dinner table and Ria tells Yuki that he should have told her earlier about his girlfriend. She talks about their marriage and is extremely impressed by the food that Yuno has made. Afterward, she is showing Yuki's childhood naked pictures to Yuno. When Yuki sees them laughing happily, he checks and realizes that it is his childhood pictures. He takes the album away but Ria has more albums available to show. The next day, Ria brings Raizuk into the house. Raizuk tries to kill Yuno by faking himself tripping whilst holding a pair of scissors. Yuno survives this as she manages to put a cushion between her and the scissors. Ria tells Raizuk to not play with scissors. He puts the scissors on the table and goes to the bathroom. He says to himself that Yuno is tough and reveals that he is the fifth future diary owner. Raizuk has a hypervision diary which only has three entries per day. As the diaries of Yuki and Yuno form a strong team, he needs to outsmart them if he wants to kill them. Later, everyone is eating lunch at the dining table. Raizuk proudly tells everyone that he has made the salad. Ria's phone suddenly started to ring so she had to go outside. 
In a flashback, it is revealed that Raizuk has injected the tomatoes with poison. Yuno rolls the tomato on the fork and thinks that the weight of the tomato is higher than usual. As Yuki was about to eat one, she quickly stops him and dumps the salad. Yuki's future suddenly changed which made him confused as to what impacted the change. While Yuki is drying his hair, he remembers the change in the future earlier and thinks that a future diary user must be nearby. He gets another entry in his diary which tells him that Yuno will be electrocuted at 7.21 p.m. When Yuno gets in the bath, Raizuk enters with a pair of gloves while holding the wires. Yuki realizes that he won't be able to make it in time so he uses the hair dryer on the highest settings which causes a drop in the electricity right before Raizuk dumps the wires into the water. Realizing that his plan has failed, he runs from the bathroom laughing. Meanwhile, Karusu sends Oryu a message saying that the fifth future diary user might be inside Yuki's home. Yuno wants to kill Raizuk just for the sake of getting over the mess but Yuki can't let her kill a child. They plan on finding his future diary but Raizuk comes out of the bathroom and says that they will never be able to find it with their small brains. Afterward, the two start to search the whole house for the diary. During the search, Yuno goes away and starts to chase Raizuk with a mallet. When Rhea hears the ruckus, she comes out of her room to check but Yuno accidentally knocks her with the mallet which upsets Yuki. After they are done patching Rhea, Yuno accepts Yuki's plan to locate the diary and meditates on the kitchen table to find out. Eventually, she realizes that Raizuk will have the diary delivered to home as a package. When the package arrives, Yuki runs to steal but opens it from the wrong side as planned by Raizuk which causes a poisonous gas to spread throughout the room. Raizuk took Rhea to the garden beforehand as he doesn't want to hurt her. Yuki faints because of the gas so Yuno takes her to the bathroom. Raizuk offers Yuno to play hide and seek with her. If she wins, he will give the antidote to her. Yuno searches the whole house, dodging a bunch of traps all while holding her breath. She eventually goes to the second floor to look out for Raizuk. When she approaches the stairs, Raizuk makes water flow on the stairs and drops a light bulb to electrocute Yuno. As he was about to inject her with something, Yuki throws a dart on his right shoulder and gives Yuno a mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. Yuno wakes up and stabs Raizuk. In his last moments, Raizuk gives the antidote to her and tells her one of them will eventually end up killing the other in this game. Yuno goes back to Yuki to give him the antidote but goes unconscious midway. Oryu enters the room and administers the antidote to both of them. On his way to his new school with Yuno, Yuki sees a guy named Eru Akai's observing him from a distance. He tries to tell Yuno about him but realizes that Eru isn't there anymore. Yuno tells Yuki to not use his diary at the new school in order to not draw any attention from the other future diary owners. At the school, his previous classmate Kasaka Aoji picks on him again as he used to in the previous school. Aoji says loudly that Yuki caused the death of their previous classmates. He then vows to not let him get a fresh start here but Yuki is defended by two girls named Hinata and Mao. Yuki quickly becomes friends with the three of them and they go to a park after school where different murders are reported. Yuno goes along with them despite not wanting to and is jealous of seeing Yuki with his friends. Hinata goes to the woods on her own and gets attacked by a bunch of dogs which causes the future to change in Yuki's and Yuno's diaries. They go to investigate only to find out her torn arm and body. Eru arrives there as well and helps them escape the woods. The owner of the Tsukishima kennels and a future diary owner, Karyuyudo Tsukishima, holds a banquet for his dogs and reveals that he has transferred his diary and dogs to his daughter. Eru reveals that he has been observing Yuki all along because of his involvement in the recent incidents that happened. The dogs soon arrive at the observatory building they are hiding in and almost break into the building. Although he was reluctant, Yuki ends up using his diary to help the group in order to keep the dogs out. After the dogs go away, Mao captures Yuki and holds a knife to his throat whilst also taking his diary. Inada soon arrives as well and reveals herself as the daughter of Karyudo, an owner of the breeder diary. She further reveals that she doesn't care about Yuki and is after the future diary of Aru. In a flashback, Karudo tells his daughter Hinata about the murders he committed with his dogs in the future diary. Karudo wants to win the survival games and become the god of space and time in order to bring his dead wife back together so they can finally become a complete family but to do so, he requires Hinata's help since Eru has been spying on him. He thinks that Eru might also be a future diary owner. In the present, Eru proposes a game of coin toss to Hinata for Yuki. Eru wins the coin toss so Mao releases Yuki. Yuno notices that Eru's diary didn't make a sound when the future changed so she tackles him to the ground. She looks at his phone and realizes that his phone has no entry revealing that he is not a diary owner. 
Afterward, they agree to play another game in exchange for Yuki's diary. Eru tells Yuno to cover Yuki's ears. Eru ends up winning the game but tells Yuki that they have lost before Yuno knocks him out. Eru has realized that Yuki's diary only writes about what he believes and uses it to his advantage. It was the same reason that there was no entry in his diary about Hinata being alive as he thought that she was dead. Since they have lost, Mao draws her knife but Yuno quickly moves in and tries to stab Hinata. Mao gets in front of her and takes the stab for Hinata. They leave the observatory only for Hinata to send more dogs after them. Yuki decides to split up with the others in order to preserve his friendship with Hinata. Yuno follows him too and they soon reach Hinata who is all sad remembering how her father never had any spare time for her. Yuno holds a knife at Hinata's throat and threatens to kill her. She doesn't want anyone to come between her and Yuki in any way. As he has no other option, Yuki announces Yuno as her girlfriend to everyone including Aoji and Eru who also arrived there soon after Yuki reached there. Things eventually settle between them. Karuto communicates through a speaker on one of the dogs and tells Hinata that his plan for bringing back the family was fake. He further tells her that it is easy to trick her as compared to dogs but tells her that she shouldn't become a bad person like him. Karuto then tells everyone to be wary of those who act nice before he gets shot in the head by Kirusu. Oryu recalls her memory of confronting the third future diary owner Hiyama. During her confrontation, she meets a policeman who she has romantic feelings for. Meanwhile, Yuki and Yuno are tricked by Eru to get on the bus that is heading to a bridal fair. When they reach there, Kirusu's wife welcomes them and acts like their guide for the rest of the day. They eat a lavish dinner like the ones at a real wedding. Afterward, the two go to the dressing room to change into their wedding dresses. When they are dressed, they are offered to rehearse the wedding ceremony. Seeing that Yuki is hesitant, Yuno says that it is fine to not do it because she had a ton of fun already today but Yuki says that it's just a practice and takes Yuno to the ceremony. They are at Yuno's house and are surprised to see that Eru is already present there. Eru has investigated the hole including the room with the dead bodies but only sees that the wall of the secret room is broken and there is a huge hole in front of the room with no bodies to be seen. When Yuki asks about this, Yuno fails to remember anything as according to her, it was the first time he has visited her house. On their way home, Eru tells Yuki that why Uno has rewritten her memories to survive as her mental state was too stable. Yuki is the only one that can allow you to not be a psychopath as she is only stable when she is around Yuki. Meanwhile, at the police station, Kirusu tells the police officers to arrest Yuki and Yuno over the murder of Hinata's dad. Before the events that happened earlier, Kirusu has made a deal with Oryu and promised to help her with the police in exchange for some favor. Some days later, Yuki and Yuno are apprehended by the police and taken to the police station for interrogation. Yuno gets angry and tries to search for a weapon. Yuki tries to stop her but he is taken into the interrogation room with Kirusu. Kirusu plays a game of Russian roulette with Yuki and gets down to the last chamber. Luckily, Yuno immediately arrives in the room and shoots Kirusu's ear and chest. Yuno holds Masumi, the guy who Oryu likes, as a hostage and tries to escape the area. Kirusu plans to force the two of them to commit a crime so he can track them with his investigation diary. While getting chased, Yuki gets startled by a warning shot and shoots an officer in the stomach. Later, the duo is hiding outside a hospital and sees Kirusu's wife going inside the hospital's building. They decide to follow her but are stopped by Oryu. Oryu breaks off her alliance with Kirus which causes a dead end to appear in her diary. She allies with Yuki and Yuni and plans to take Kirusu's wife and son hostage even though the latter only has three months to live. It is revealed that Kirusu had made a deal with Oryu in exchange that her taking care of his son if something happens to him. Afterward, they are surrounded by police officers and a bandaged Kirusu. Oryu gives a flash grenade to Yuki and tells him to patrol the perimeter. She then calls Kirusu to make demands with him as she has held his family hostage but Kirusu doesn't intend to give up since his son is going to die anyways and he can get his family back when he becomes the successor of Deus. The police capture Yuki but get taken hostage by Kirusu when Yuno kills all the police officers. Yuno gets a hold of the grenade and threatens to use it if Kirusu doesn't let go of Yuki. Kirusu eventually lets go of Yuki but Yuno approaches Kirusu and uses the grenade to take Kirusu down with her. Oryu explodes the bomb that she had planted in the room of Kirusu's son. At the hospital, after gaining consciousness, Kirusu holds a knife at Yuno's throat while Yuki points a gun at him. Both Yuki and Yuno's diary says that Yuki will end up hitting Yuno with the bullet. Yuki talks to himself and says that he is actually in love with Yuno now and successfully hits Kirusu. Kirusu asks Oryu to watch over his son and breaks his diary 
causing him to die right on the spot. Some days later, on their way to the stargazing trip, Eru sends a message to Yuki telling him to not get too close to Yuno but Yuno deletes the message before Yuki can read it. They board a train and Yuki asks Yuno about her abnormally large bag. She tells Yuki that it is just personal stuff when in reality, it contains full bottles of pills, syringes, and a couple of human skulls. That's all for today. How do you think the story of the future diary proceeds from this point? Let us know in the comments down below. Do leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more amazing content.